This is a highway noise barrier. You've probably seen one before. These 14-foot concrete or metal walls are designed to reduce traffic noise for nearby residences and businesses. As of 2016, there were over 3,000 miles of them in the US, but they aren't cheap. Construction costs about $2 million per mile. With that high price tag, they better be effective. However, research shows they might not be and have even been shown to make noise louder. Here's how. Depending on the distance to the road, levels of traffic noise can reach 70 to 80 decibels at a distance of 50 feet. This is relatively equal to a vacuum cleaner. Imagine having to listen to a vacuum cleaner all day long. And the biggest contributor to this noise pollution is car tires. Every time a tire rotates, the patch that adheres to the pavement sticks to it, then has to peel off. It sticks and peels and sticks and peels. And that peeling is the noise you hear. In the 1920s and 30s, car tires were narrow and relatively quiet. But as roadways expanded in the 1940s, cars got larger and more powerful. And with the greater surface area of rubber sticking and peeling to the road, traffic grew louder. This was a particular problem here. Hollywood. Movie studios, concert venues, and neighborhoods were overwhelmed with sound. So in 1968, California installed the country's first noise barrier along Interstate 680 near Melpitas. And in 1972, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency passed the Noise Control Act. From then on, concrete reflective barriers began to appear along highways across the country, but only in areas that met a criteria. When the people do an assessment of a project to determine if barriers should be built, they have a threshold for how many residents will be impacted and an allowance factor for each of those residences so that when they then assess how many residences and what the total would be, if that number is greater than the cost of barrier, then they will build the barrier. But even if your neighborhood meets those criteria, you might not want a wall. Recent studies suggest noise barriers only benefit a few people. That is, the residents directly behind them. But for any years just past this area, noise reduction is nearly negligible. And according to an investigation by the online publication Undark, residents may actually notice an increase in noise depending on their distance to the wall. One man in Florida living a few blocks away from the highway claimed his house was quiet before a wall was built. So sound is waves and they will bounce off a hard surface. They're absorbed by a soft surface, but most barriers are hard surfaces. So we think of them as deflecting the sound. There's also a phenomena called diffraction where the wave when it goes past the edge of the barrier gets bent. Those diffracted waves don't affect something close behind the barrier, but they find their way to the distant receivers pretty easily, and so you don't even notice a difference. The best way to understand the effect of a barrier is to think about a, a, a light source, like a, a flashlight source. So what happens is if you can get better performance if you can move that barrier closer to the source. When you do that, then light is reflected and it's darker behind it and the region where it's dark is increased. Or you can move the barrier closer to the receiver, getting yourself in up close to the barrier. So you're in the deep shadow. What happens to a lot of the residences around, behind a barrier is that they're not close behind the barrier, so they're not in the deep shadow. So they're only in a very faint shadow. On top of that, the effectiveness of noise barriers can fluctuate based on the elements. There are issues where sound waves curve based on the temperature gradient of the air. And in particular, as the sun sets or as the sun rises, air will have a, a fairly significant temperature gradient from the ground up. And so people will remark that the barrier wasn't working this morning, and it actually is real. Because of these flaws, some experts suggest alternatives to alleviate noise pollution. We have found pavement types that do make a difference. In the asphalt side, making the pavement for us so that the air gets pumped into the pavement and back out instead of being compressed and creating sound seems to help and it's noticeable. 
For concrete, there's a, a process of creating texture in the direction of travel that has reduced sound levels, and it's pretty predictable and reliable. And some states are looking into different types of walls as opposed to concrete or metal. The federal government doesn't provide incentives for alternatives, and concrete walls are simply more durable. They only need to be replaced every 30 years or so. So although there is mounting evidence for superior substitutes, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Do you live near a highway with or without a noise barrier? Tell us in the comments below. While you're at it, please subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we post new videos.